Okay, so probably the thing that was the biggest question in office hours was about the pulmonary function test, but mostly about like the restricted versus the obstructive um, diseases. You will be doing a lab about this so that you understand this in a much better sense, okay? But I'm going to go over it to, to prep you guys mostly for lab, okay? So when you do a pulmonary function test, you're doing a spirometer. You put your patient on the spirometer and you tell them, breathe in, breathe out normally, breathe in, breathe out normally. And then you're going to say, okay, deeply exhale for me. Okay, breathe normally, deeply inhale. Now, deeply exhale as much as you possibly can for as long as you possibly can, okay? The point of the spirometer is to check for a restrictive pulmonary disease or an obstructive pulmonary disease. And so let's let's just kind of like write that out right here. Uh, let me see. So you are going to use the normal spirograph, like what, what we call slow vital capacity. Okay, let me start over again. So <laughs> let me start all over again. Remember our spirograph, right? So in our spirograph, we measured things like vital capacity, right? Vital capacity is everything that you can inhale plus tidal volume plus everything that you can exhale, right? That's vital capacity. When you do a pulmonary function test, there's two different types of pulmonary function tests you can do. You can do a slow vital capacity where you just tell them, do this slowly, or there's a forced vital ca capacity where you also basically tell them to forcefully exhale for a longer period of time. Okay, this is a slow one because you're not giving them a time frame. You're just telling them, okay, go ahead and do what you need to do. In a restrictive disease, Okay. In restricted pulmonary diseases, what ends up happening is the lungs are restricted in some way, so they can't inflate fully. Think about, I just think about like a restriction, like if I'm going to restrict the lungs, I'm going to put like a belt around them or something. And then when air tries to come in, they don't actually expand. So what that means is you're going to see a decrease in things like tidal volume. Um, you shouldn't be able to inhale as greatly. Like, so when I say take a deep inhale, <gasps> they're not going to be able to have a full volume of deep inhale. So our inspiratory reserve volume should be a lot lower in that case. And since our inspiratory reserve volume is a lot lower, we're going to see things like total lung capacity decreasing, stuff like that. Overall, what you should see in a restrictive disease is a decrease in volumes. So decrease in things like vital capacity because you have a decrease in your inhalation. You see uh, a decrease in your functional residual capacity Again, also, because you didn't inhale deeply, you can't exhale deeply. You, you, didn't, you didn't inhale a whole bunch of air. You can't exhale a whole bunch of air because it, it didn't come in to begin with. Usually tidal volume is a little bit lower. So that means this will end up being a little bit lower right here. Like this will end up being maybe a little bit lower right there. And like this would end up being a little bit lower right there, okay? And because of that, you see a decrease in total lung capacity. Total lung capacity decreases because everything decreased. So remember, total lung capacity is everything. Okay, it says you have a decrease in residual volume as well, but that's a little bit weirder. In an obstructive disease, you can inflate the lungs all the way, but because you have an obstruction in the airways, air does not escape. Right, just like if I obstructed you from leaving a room, you would be stuck inside of that room. That is what an obstructive disease is. I'm going to 
get like so basically air gets stuck inside of the lungs and since air gets stuck inside of the lungs what we're going to see th is uh we're going to see a couple increases in stuff so i can fully inhale but now what happens is i cannot exhale all the way so we should see a decrease in like uh i'm sorry we should see an increase in residual volume and I'm gonna kind of fully explain this. So hopefully you'll get it for lab two. Wait, what am I doing? Increase, yeah, increase, I'm sorry, increase. FRC, FRC. Let's just start with the spirograph here. Okay, so let's just erase this. So we understand what an obstructive disease is gonna look like. In the obstructive disease, your tidal volume is normal, your inhalation is normal. What's gonna happen is your expiratory reserve volume is, gonna, is going to decrease here. And what ends up happening is that causes an increase right here in residual volume. And overall, because this is ERV, this actually also increases, which is called the F. RC, functional uh, residual capacity. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully it kind of makes sense because your air gets stuck in the airway, so you can't let it out. So your functional reserve capacity ends up actually increasing, even though your expiratory reserve, I'm sorry, your expiratory reserve volume actually does decrease, okay? These are, obstructive diseases are a lot harder to determine from a spirograph. It's not necessarily easy to determine that from a spirograph. From a, I'm sorry, a slow vital capacity. Okay, so here, restrictive, you can use slow vital capacity to help you. Regardless, you're going to do another set of pulmonary function tests, okay, where what you're going to do is you're going to primarily look at this area right here where you have expiratory reserve volume. And you're gonna do that in a forced way, okay? So when you do that, basically we're just gonna turn this upside down. And what we're gonna tell our, our subject is, Inhale as deeply as possible, and then now you're going to exhale as deeply as possible for as long as you possibly can, okay? So we're looking at exhalation function. So remember, in a restrictive disease, since we cannot inflate, but we can deflate, in this case, when we force exhale, everything is okay. You can forcibly exhale everything. What If you didn't inflate all the way, which is what's happening in a restrictive disease, then your volume is going to be a little bit lower. So we see that right here, right? This is called forced vital capacity. So our forced vital capacity is like the total volume of air that you inhaled plus you exhaled over like, you know, a three, three to five second time period. Like what is that high value, the highest value? you can see it's obviously lower than normal, right? And then what we look at is something called forced expiratory volume, basically how much air can you forcefully exhale within one second, two seconds, and three seconds. One second is the most important. But what we're gonna see is here is our forced vital capacity is low. It's lower than normal. And then we can also see here that our forced expiratory volume in one second is also lower than normal. But when you take this as a, uh, as a percentage, when you make it into a percentage where you take FEV1 over FVC, this is basically saying, am I exhaling the right volume of air in one second? This is usually 80%, which is normal. So even though these nor these values are, are lower than normal, their ratio is the same. And so that tells me that exhale is okay. 
And since exhale is okay, I don't have, uh, um, in this case, I have a restrictive disease because it's telling me that my exhale is okay, but then I look at my spirograph here and my inhales is lower than normal, then I'm not inhaling enough. That's what it's telling me, okay? In an obstructive disease, what we're gonna see is, you see how forced vital capacity takes longer and you can see how after one second, after two seconds, after three seconds, it's gonna take us a lot longer to get rid of that air. So when we do a forced exhale here, it's not normal. In this case, our forced vital capacity is low. And what we'll see is our forced expiratory volume one is also very, very low, very low. And then when we take our ratio, it's usually less than 80%, okay? Really less than 70% is actually bad. It's, it should, normal should be anywhere from 70 to 80%. But if you have an obstructive disease, the what that means is you cannot, you cannot exhale properly, right? Our lungs cannot deflate. So air gets trapped in the lungs. It will take a greater amount of time to release that air. So what that means is our forced vital capacity, we might get to normal, but we're still gonna be much lower than normal, right? You see how we're, we're lower than normal. That means that air is trapped inside the lungs. Even after we forcefully tried to push it as much of it out as possible. Okay, so when you do the secondary pulmonary function test where you do a forced expiratory volume, where you forcefully exhale, it's really going to tell you whether or not you have an obstructive disease. So here we're going to use our forced vital capacity for this. And yes, you have to actually do forced vital capacity to rule out a restrictive disease. Because if, if you have a forced vital capacity being normal, you you basically can say that, well, I don't have an obstructive disease, but my spirograph is not is not uh, normal. So maybe I have a restrictive disease instead, okay? And if you're like, whoa, my head's spinning, just remember a restrictive disease is something like maybe muscle damage, uh, pleurasy, which is damage to uh, the pleural membranes. Whereas an obstructive disease, you wanna think, it's easier, I usually think about asthma because asthma causes the um, the bronchioles to get smaller and smaller and smaller, stopping air from flowing outwards, okay? That would be an obstructive disease. I hope this helps a little bit with lab, but you guys will be doing a lab about this. And then make sure you ask questions. <laughs>